So that can throw a curve for you there. So what that means is, you know, you're not going to be able to, you know, get those three easy points for BGP. It may be already uh, done for you. Meaning as soon as you get IP reachability up, at that point, you know, your BGP peers may start to come up automatically because they have the pre-configuration in there. They may have done basic OSPF. And why is this? Because at a CCI level, you know, do I want to see if you can configure, you know, if you can enable OSPF on an interface or if you can enable a BGP peer? Probably not. You know, at the CCA level, I'm going to assume that you can do the basic config. Okay, but what they may do is they may give you 80% of the basic BGP config there. And you may have to complete the other 20% or the other 50%, depending on how, it, you know, how, it's, uh, how your initial configs are um, in, you know, applied in the routers there. They may have, you know, half of BGP done. They may have none. They may have no BGP. They may have 80% of BGP done. You know, th there's really no telling. And, you know, from a perspective of, of, you know, an instructor, I think it's really good that they do this. Why is that? It's easier to build a network. I think it's easier to build a network and work on a network that you, that you built from scratch. Okay, if they ask you to build a BGP network from scratch, it's easier than if they ask you to, you know, do a couple tasks. Let's say they want you to, you know, complete some route reflector configuration or they want you to complete some, you know, some net, some sort of network advertising or BGP communities or whatever. It's easier if you built the network from scratch than it is if you have to jump into the middle of it. Because people with more experience are going to what? They're going to probably have jumped into the middle of more configurations than somebody with less experience. So it's a way of them, it's a way of them being able to test experience. Another thing I'll add to when I'm talking about this pre-configuration, three things we added in version four of the workbook. Um, we added troubleshooting to version four. There's a troubleshooting section in some labs. There's, there's not a troubleshooting section in some labs. So you, you don't know what you're going to get. It'll tell you if there is a troubleshooting section. If there is a troubleshooting section in a lab, you are normally going to be able to rely on the diagram to determine what your IP addresses are, what your interface, uh, sorry, what your encapsulations are going to be, and so forth. So, and, and that's what they mentioned. If you go to networkers and look at this and listen to the CCA presentation there, they'll, they'll talk about that. You're going to rely on the diagram. Um, you know, but it may be a little bit more complicated. You know, there, it may not be something as an IP address. Maybe it's changing some default. Maybe uh, it's no IP subnet zero. The default, you know, in the, C in the iOS is no IP subnet zero. Most people who prepare for the CCI lab today have never ran into a, a case where they needed to worry about IP subnet zero or the zero subnet or why that can't be used in older routers. You know, and, and you know, so those kind of things, you know, there's a really good, really good troubleshooting task in a couple of the workbooks that you may not pick off until towards the end when it's asking you to advertise the zero subnet for, you know, like your class B. And you don't understand why the other router doesn't pick it up in its routing table because it says, you know, it, 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 the router's configured not to support the zero, um, the zero uh, subnet there. All right, so troubleshooting is one. The other one is pre-configuration. You may have some pre-configuration done. That's un un unfortunate if you do have that because you're losing on some easy points. You're losing out on some easy points. Um, another one is that we had it to version four of the workbook is network migration. There's a couple labs that deal with network migration. So when you come into the lab, you'll have like, you load the initial configs, you'll have like RIP running on like three routers. Now you've got to go in there, or for example, you're running EIGRP on three routers. Now you've got to go in there and overlay RIP and get RIP as the preferred uh, as the preferred network protocol for certain routes, but other routes you're supposed to use EIGRP. And, and it may seem like it's something simple, and from the wording, it, it does seem like something simple, but I was thoroughly surprised at the amount of problems that it threw into the network with route redistribution, with potential for routing loops, because how many times do you run into a situation where you've got you know, three routers running two protocols over the same interfaces, and then they're connected like to OSPF, and then you're redistributing between them. So you're redistributing you know, like OSPF uh, into OSPF RIP and EIGRP from the same interface, the same router. And it, it can throw a lot, of, you know, a lot of curves at you. So uh, we do cover that in the workbook there in version three there. All right, a structured approach. So what is a structured approach? Unlike uh, you may see out there in the marketplace, 
we've had this structured approach outlined since the very beginning of our company. Okay, a couple people like to use it for marketing. They like to say they have a structured approach, but if you look at it, it's and if you look at their website before they say they had the structured approach, it's the same thing before they have a structured approach than it is today, except now they say they have a structured approach. So it's a little bit different than what we have. We tr we actually designed, you know, the workbook, the products, the classes around a structured approach. You know, we don't only teach a boot camp class. Why is that? Because you've got to know the technologies. You know, our most popular product is the class on demand. I, 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 I'd say the workbook runs a little bit better than the class on demand, but as far as classes go, our advanced technologies class is the most popular product we have. Why is it the most popular product? Because we spend 80 hours going over the technologies. So we spend 80 hours going over the technologies from a CCIA perspective, and we do it hands-on. That's different than you see in a lot of other online classes. A lot of online classes, like if you go to you know different um, Cisco training partners, you know out there, they'll have you know online classes, and a lot of it just be slides. It'll be slides, and I don't see personally how people can sit through a week of slides. It's so boring to watch slides, and then they take a break and they say, "Okay, work on this lab." And it's like, well, if I'm paying for a class, why am I going to work on a lab? You know, I, I I can get routers anywhere. I get access to routers anywhere. You know, so what we do, we do it a little bit different. If you looked at the class on demand or looked at the sample or actually had access to it, we do it hands-on. We do it in, in a hands-on approach. Okay, so we do the class in a hands-on approach where we do the labs, basically. You need to see what it's like for a CCIE to work on a network. You know, when I do route redistribution in the, the, the class, the advanced technology class, every class is different. I, ne I follow a basic topology, but how I do the redistribution is different in every class. If you go back to the older version of the class on the man, you can see me, when I do route distribution, you can see me do it a little bit different. You can see me run into different problems. The same thing with multicast. I try not to run by a script. I've got basic timing. I say, you know, I want to, you know, complete this section here, but I don't have any script for, for advanced route distribution. You know what slides I have? Zero. I've got a network topology. That's what I have for advanced route distribution. In the first part of route distribution, the first week, I do have some slides where it explains what goes on. But the second week, it's all hands-on. You have to see it work. Okay, so, but what I'm trying to do is show you guys, you know, show everybody what it, you know, what it takes to do the configuration, you know, do the verification, do the troubleshooting, because without a doubt, every class I go through, you know, I run into problems. You know, when I was doing the, the SP class, the last time I taught it, I ran into problem with traffic engineering. Uh, you know, when I, when I was doing multicast, I ran into problem with some of the switches and the, the IP IGMP join command, which is a problem on the switches and only the switches. So, you know, I run into these problems, but it's really good to see the troubleshooting, you know, to see, you know, how do I work through this? You know, how do I deal with this problem? And, and that's the kind of stuff that you want to pick up out of a class rather than, you know, a bunch of slides, someone reading off a bunch of slides to you. You know, yeah, you can print the slides out for me, and I can read them myself. So the hands-on approach is a little bit different class, um, and I really think from the CCI level, you need to see that hands-on approach. When I do the voice technology class in December, it's hands-on. I'm not going to be sitting there going through slides. I'll go through some, you know, some basic slides, but other than that, it's all hands-on. It's all me going through the configuration. You need to see what it's like. You need to see, you know, you know, from that, from a CCI perspective, what does it take to configure this device, and, and not what does it take for me to move from slide to slide. So it's a little bit different approach. But the structured approach, from a learning perspective, from a learning perspective, this is the approach that I use, that I personally use. I expanded upon it um, after I prepared, you know, during my preparation for actually the SP Lab exam. I used to have three steps, but now I ex added in an extra step. No cost, though. I don't charge you guys for the extra step or anything. <laughs> Just kidding. Um, step one is to get a basic understanding. Let's say I'm going to learn about uh, MPLS. So I'm going to learn about MPLS, and I don't have any idea about MPLS. So, so what am I going to do? I'm going to read a vendor-independent uh, write up white paper book whatever on MPLS not a whole book though man don't give me a whole book because I don't want to read you know 800 pages or 300 pages of MPLS what I want to know is the core portions of the MPLS I want to get that basic MPLS the MPLS VPNs and so forth 
you know, what do I need? What do I need to know for the basic portion of MPLS? Don't give me